Texas Deacon here. Thank you for joining me. The title of tonight's talk is No Flat Tax. If we replace our present income tax with a flat tax, nothing will really change. Well, what do we replace it with? How about an ad valorem tax, A-D-V-A-L-O-R-E-M. It can be called a value-added tax, a user tax, a consumption tax. And we have examples of the ad valorem tax around today. Gasoline, tobacco, alcohol. There's not one person in a thousand that can tell you what the tax is on any of these products, much less all three of them, any one of them. We just pay what the what the sticker to, what the price at the pump says or what the sticker on the bottom of the package says and that's it. No big deal. Income tax. I want to talk about some of the main problems with the income tax. Oh, I'm going to throw something in right here. Who pays income tax? It says here. Guess who, who really pays the taxes from the American magazine? The top 5% pay well over half the income taxes. Top 5% of the richest. They want to tell us it's the poor people. But when you do the research, you'll find out that the, if I remember correctly, the top, the bottom half of the wage earners pay only 5% of the total income tax. Oh, I have something else I might as well throw in right now. The question, is the IRS a government agency? The answer, neither the Federal Reserve or the IRS are government agencies. It's not a coincidence that they were both established in 1913. IRS is just a corporation that does work for the government. Okay, back to the income tax itself. Drug dealers, how much income tax do you think they pay? Prostitutes? How about the self-employed that get paid in cash? How about the illegals to get paid in cash and send a lot of their money out of the country? How about waitresses and tips? Do they claim it all? Organized crime. How much income tax do you think they pay? How about those that are robbers that rob people, businesses, banks? And we had our bank in my little small town robbed a couple weeks ago. If that robbery gets away, how much income tax do you think he's going to pay on that money? How about burglars that burgle your house, steal your property, then sell it? You think they're going to pay income tax? I just listed a few of those, and there are others out there, and I'm not down on those waitresses. I know a couple right now that don't claim all their, their tips, and I also have a close friend that does yard work. He didn't do any this summer. Grass didn't grow. And he doesn't claim all the money he, uh, he earns either. Under the flat tax, none of these people would still pay tax. None of them. So nothing would change. Under a user or consumption tax, they would pay. When I talk to people about taxes, one of the things that I ask is, I say, have you ever heard of anybody cheating on the state sales tax, which you pay at the cash register? They said, well, no, you can't cheat on it. I said, how about your income tax? You ever heard of anybody cheating on that? Well, a lot of people do. And it's true, a lot of them do. But when it comes with the state sales tax that's collected at the cash register, it's very difficult to cheat. We have a person in the White House. I won't bother to mention his name. He can't open his mouth without saying millionaires and billionaires. I'm going to read something 
from Exodus, the 30th uh, chapter 30, verse 13 through 15. This is what everyone among those who are numbered shall give, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The half shekel shall be an offering to, to the Lord. Everyone in, included among those who are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more. The poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When you give an offering to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. The rich shall not give more, the poor shall not give less. God said that. No income tax. One of the things that the government one of the reasons the government wants to keep the uh, income tax in place is that every year us law-abiding citizens give the federal government a complete history of our lives for the previous year, and they add it to all those others. Next year is election year, and we are going to try to send godly conservative people to Washington. At the election time for many, many years, I've been saying, well, it's election time, you got to make a choice. Do you want to send a Democrat out there that's going to do everything wrong, or are you going to send a Republican that's going to do nothing? I wish it were different, but that's the way I see it. Only divine intervention can save America now. I sincerely believe that. Now, the Bible tells us how to save America right here. And I'm going to read it to you. It's in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and heal their land. I'm going to read that again. If my people who are called by my name, that's Christian people. It doesn't say everybody, it just says, if the Christians, they will humble themselves, get a right attitude toward God, what that means. Humble yourself. Pray and seek my faith. Talk to God sometimes. Get to know Him. He wants you to. And turn from their wicked ways. You know, start showing up at church a little more regularly. Start tithing. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. And right now, America, including Christians, have a lot of sin and need to be forgiven. And heal their land. Yes, God will heal America. If we just do what it says right here in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. You give that a lot of thought. And how about a lot of prayer? May God bless America. May God bless Republic of Texas. And may God bless you and yours.